cool. So I'm just gonna talk you guys through the selection, the sound selection um, for for drums in drill, what to look for in the dynamics of the sound and how to fuse them together in a in a way that works. So you always want to have a bass or like main percussion instrument or something that's driving the beat or the groove basically. In this example, for me, it's the it's the main counter snare. There's not too much going on. It's a it's a um, very generic drill pattern. It's used in many songs, um, and that's like the main driving point of my percussion. Everything else is like underneath that as such, and that's going down the center. And then on the left and right, I've got two lower percussions, which are more hi hat based, more um, less low end, uh, and a lot more like tucked in the mix. So through the left, I've got. And like some of the lower ones are like filling in gaps where the other one isn't playing, if that makes sense. Or like little sections here, there's like a little fill. And the same with the main one. So I like to have them kind of like dipping in and out of each other. So then I'm gonna play the last one. And like that's just a basic eight bar canvas for me for drums for like a per for percussion anyway. What I what I'll do is build around that, get the main elements of the beat. Like the bass will come in now, um, and then I'll probably like add to the drums or take away depending on what direction the musicality takes. If you're looking for drill sounds, there's plenty of kits out there. I've got a kit out myself. Plenty of other producers have got kits out there for affordable rates. And also splice is constantly changing, so it's always keeping up to date with new sounds and genres. So there's a lot of drill sounds that you can find on there and various other websites as well. So the counter snare pattern I've got here, anyone that, was, that would be trying to replicate this drill pattern or, or create something very similar to it, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So if you just wanted to create an empty region for viewing purposes, I'm just gonna pencil in the notes here. So there's always um, a counter snare hitting on the one, on the very first, first um, bar, so I'm going to put the metronome on for make it a bit easier, so. So the second snare is always going to be hitting here on your grid. You can hear where it's going. So then once you've got this one here, if you've got these three, that's all you need. And then you just loop that. So then now I've got, basically, I've just got one bar of counter snare. And then you can play with the velocity as well, which adds like more of a swing. Just gives it more of a different feel rather than straight. And then obviously you could just double that over and then you could add a variation for example. If you're, if you're starting to make drill for the first time, if you can get that pattern right and then maybe build around that, it'd be like um, maybe a lot easier to start producing drill if you can get the patterns right first. You can make anything into drill as long as the drums and the, and, the, and the dynamics are correct. I'm gonna add the 808 into the beat now, and I normally do the 808s before my kicks because I feel it's slightly restricting doing the kicks first, for me anyway, because the 808 is melody and it's part of the sonics of, of the uh, musicality of it. So for me, I wanna be able to get that out of the way first and uh, then I can add the kicks afterwards and then adjust things if needs be. I'm not that con I'm not completely musically trained, so sometimes I use tuners, and this is gonna be a great technique for someone who, who doesn't know anything about keys or working in key. I basically put a tuner on the guitar sample, 
So now when I play the sample, the tuner will feed back notes to me which it detects within the sample. So I already know it's in F minor, but if I wanted to find out the root, the root might not always be F. And like certain sections have got different roots. So here you can pick up the root note for each section. So this is a great way to do like um, your bass lines and if you're, you know, if you're not musically trained. I normally play them in and then pencil little things around afterwards. So I'll play like a rough melody probably. So with the 808, I feel like I like to have it all on the same velocity. Sometimes the higher ones I'll turn down on a little bit. Everything I like to have at the same velocity. This is a feature in Logic, by the way. Um, you can basically highlight all your notes in your piano roll and make them all the same velocity. Through, with the tuner, like um, I've, I've been able to like change certain bits that might not sound right. So if I put the tuner on this section here, you can uh, also actually bring the 808 up an octave for you to hear. I can hear that that is hitting on the right note now, which doesn't sound as good. Now I'm going to do a glide on this section afterwards and I'll show you guys how I've done that. So like, I kind of think that that might sound better over here, actually. So I'll probably change, bring, put that over there. So um, on Logic, there's a specific way you can do the glides which I'll show you now. Uh, once you've loaded your 808 into the sampler, um, not the quick sampler, the main sampler, if you select the synth section up here, 
all of these will be selected when you open it and you don't need these so you can deselect these um maybe keep that one because that will be where your audio is playing from but up here uh there's a set there's a details which is normally like that so if you press details it'll bring down this drop down menu in which you change this is normally set to poly set that to legato and you can just mess around with the glide i normally set it around here this is my normal setting so the other thing i believe is polyphony is normally set to 16 which might, which means 16 notes can play at one time you want to set that to one so only one note will play at one time which will allow you to do the glides in this way. On this section here, I've got a lower 808, which is playing at the same time. But because of the lower 808, this is what adds the glide effect. If I play that by itself. And if I play it without the low note, you'll see what it's doing. So yeah, as I said, you can adjust that glide various ways. You can change the attack and release as well to suit uh, any style that you're trying to work with. So the next thing I'll do is add the kicks onto the beat. And again, I've got a kick which is loaded up uh, and tuned. And I will um, just play in a pattern and go from there. and make sure the kicks are the same velocity. Although there will be some that I'll probably change at different velocities. I feel like velocity is uh, a big thing in drill, like playing with the velocity of different instruments, um, especially in the drums. So with my kick, I always make the kick in mono. So if you're running a plugin or VST for your kick, in Logic anyway, you run the VST from mono and then any uh, EQ or any processing that you've added on top, you run through mono as well. See, when I did that, the channel now changed to mono. The reason why I do that is because having certain things in mono and stereo will allow you to have more room in the mix. I always like my kick to be straight down the middle. Having it in mono will allow it to do that and let it not clash with other things. Sometimes with the kick, maybe take out a bit of the low end, just to like add, the, maybe like spice up the transients a little bit, only a little bit. And then maybe boost around here, just a little bit around the mids. Doing this, it's like making it sound a bit more sharp. Let's be a bit more. And then um, Native Instruments do this great instrument called Transient Shaper. It's not an instrument, it's more so a plugin which will basically increase the transients, whatever you put it on. So for example, the kick and snare, I normally put this on. You can hear the kick is with that on is like way, way more punchy. So with that all together now. putting that on the rim. And whenever I notice that something is going into the red a little bit, I just bring everything down. Cool, now I've got eight bar. This is pretty much like a very good canvas for the beat now. I'll add another eight, so it's a 16. And then I'll start doing more drums now, more percussion, maybe another melody. With the placement of the kicks, most of the time it's hitting on the 808. So if you look at the first bar of every four bars, there's always a kick on the 808. To be fair, there's a, a kick in 808 hitting on every two bars. 
which is pretty common in drill again. And that note, it's just it's just the root note every time. So the F with an F minor, as you can see, all the way along, it's just very simple. And that cuts off at the snare, just to allow the beat to breathe a little bit. So we're not um, dragging it on too much and things clashing. And at the end, I normally add a kick on the last bar as well. But I'll probably do that at the end of the 16. Now I kind of need some like more percussion, I think. We need some like impacts. 